Hello there, good evening. This is News Tonight here on GH1 Television with me, Tutu Adam. So let's see the stories making the headlines this hour. And coming up, President Nekufado replies NBC flag bearer John Jamali Mohammed's accusation that he is a clearing agent of officials accused of corrupt acts. Also in this broadcast, security analyst Adam Bona demands answers from government on whether the anti-illegal mining task forces have been disbanded or not. If, if a military officer or a police officer or a national security operator, you put that operator to go into the bushes and fight gallantry, and that person told you I will not go, are you going to carry that particular officer? Also ahead, NPP flag bearer Dr. Mohamedou Baumia begins a Shanti regional tour with a promise to review constitution to allow for the election of MMDCs. There's the election of the MMDCs, so they, then they are being elected locally and then you are not appointed by the president. I know it's still something uh, is a bit here, so, yeah, and I think we will still work on, on that. In business this evening, Importers and Exporters Association warn of imminent food shortage in the midst of rising prices on the market. Many, many of the business people are saying that they will import again. And so, give ourselves, if it's true that they will not import again, give ourselves from now to August ending, you will realize that there will be shortage of food in this country. And later in sports this evening, senior national team, the Black Stars, in a few minutes, will take on their Central African Republic counterparts in a World Cup qualifier at the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. There are details of this and many other stories coming up shortly. Stay with us. Thank you for choosing us this evening across the world we are streaming on our social media platforms on facebook and x at gh1 tv now president Ekufado has refuted allegations by the national democratic congress's ndc john mahama that he is a clearing agent concerning the fight against corruption in the country according to him his administration has all adhered strictly to the public procurement laws thereby ensuring that public resources are judiciously used for the benefits of all Ghanaians. Before I conclude, Madam Chief Justice, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we are all aware of the statement by the former president and perennial NDC presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama, stigmatizing me as a clearing agent, because for him, mere allegation without more is enough to merit condemnation of an accused public official, especially one of my administration. For my part, and let me state it again for the record, I will not set aside due process and the rules of natural justice on the altar of the fight against corruption, no matter how much opprobrium this position incurs for me. President Ekufado also says, despite the noise about his government's inability to fight corruption, progress has been made in that regard. Despite the ugly noises, the fight against corruption has been a cornerstone of my administration. With a clear understanding that corruption thrives in an atmosphere conducive to its concealment. That access to information is a vital tool in the fight against corruption. My government in its first term ensured the passage of the Right to Information Act 2019 at 989 
in order to give true meaning and effect to Article 21, Clauses 1F of the Constitution. The Act, which successive governments have failed to pass, see to the implementation of the constitutional right to information held by a public institution to foster a culture of transparency and accountability in public affairs, subject to exemptions necessary and consistent with the protection of the public interest in a democratic society. The Act is now being fully implemented, with the governing board chaired by an experienced and respected retired High Court judge. The Minister of Information, his trained information officers in various ministries, departments, and agencies of government to support the full application of the law. President Ekufuado also says the commissioning of the law house, a new office complex for the Attorney General and the Minister for Justice, symbolizes his government's dedication to upholding the tenets of the rule of law. According to him, the completion of the building was a testament of his government's commitment to addressing the long-standing office accommodation issues that have hindered justice delivery in the country. Addressing the ceremony to officially open the building in Accra on Monday, President Ekufuado noted that the rule of law ensured that no one was above the law and that the principle of equality before the law was upheld. President Akufuado stressed that the building will house the Office of the Attorney General and Ministry of Justice, providing a conducive environment for the efficient administration of justice in the country. I want to use the opportunity of this platform to reassure the Ghanaian people that the law enforcement agencies of the state, including the Office of the Attorney General, will do all within their power to ensure that law and order prevail in the country at all times, especially during this critical election year. We will not allow the peace, security, and stability of the nation, which has made Ghana a beacon of democracy on the African continent, to be compromised on the altar of the ambitions of any political party or presidential candidate. It will not happen. The laws on our statute books, including those on vigilantism, will be strictly and vigorously enforced to preserve the peace and tranquility of the country. We owe that to the good people of Ghana who have demonstrated so consistently and openly their deep attachment to peaceful democratic values. The Chief Justice Gertrude Tokonu, while acknowledging the importance of building courts, emphasized the need for dedicated resources for legal education reforms and other projects to enhance justice delivery. We are still left with providing fitting locations for the several needs of professionals in the justice delivery chain, and I am hoping that sooner than later, we will be having another beautiful edifice close by to house the Council for Law Reporting, to, council, to house Legal Aid <laughs> Commission, the Law Reform Commission, the Legal Service Board, and all of the agencies that feed into providing justice to this dear nation of ours. On his part, the Attorney General, Godfrey Ikami, called for full digitization of operations of the office in eight quests to deliver effective services. Distinguished guests, last night as I looked in admiration at how orderly and almost bare the desk in my new office looked. And those of those of you who are quite close to me know that I like spaces, big spaces. I quickly remembered that in less than a day, mountains of fowl will clutter my desk. Without a doubt, we must move away from this unhealthy situation. We cannot have a modern legal service without a fully functional, digitized working environment. 
Thus, a significant fix in the case of the modern legal service I speak about is the personalization of an integrated information management system for those who attain the right of justice, or a fully digitized operation of the office. Complete electronic management of all records at the office is non-negotiable. We cannot allow paper to clutter our working environment and destroy the beauty of what we have achieved with this law house. The president of the Ghana Bar Association, Yao Ocham Kumbuavo, said the building serves as a statement that the state appreciates the duty to invest in institutions to enable them effectively carry out their constitutional and statutory duties. We at the Ghana Bar Association make this unhappy observation, which is that contemporary history of our dear nation is replete with many similar huge projects that have unfortunately fallen into state of disrepair and even fallen into the rules for lack of maintenance culture. We therefore expect this building and the likes of it to be properly and diligently maintained, going against the grain of the lack of maintenance culture of government buildings in this country. However, it should not be only about buildings. Similar zeal, efforts and resources should be directed in building the capacities, skills and training of state attorneys in global best practices to be, make them more competitive. Present at the event were justices of the Superior Court, state attorneys, ministers of state, lawyers, chiefs, among others. Away from law-related issues this evening, the Asante Hene Otumufo Ose Titu II has urged the government chair, Ni Takite Kochu II, to implement measures that promote the holistic education of the youth in the Gulf states. As part of this initiative, Otumufo Ose Titu has donated a seed amount of 500,000 Ghana cities towards an educational endowment fund for the Gulf states. These actions were a key highlights of his historic visit to the Gulf states in Accra. The first ever visit of an Asante Hene to the Gulf state occurred in 1946, marking a significant moment in Ghanaian history. The Asante Hene at the time, Utun Fuose Osei Ajiman Krempe II, made this historic visit to Accra. This visit symbolized the remarkable gesture of unity and mutual respect between two of Ghana's most influential traditional states. The 78-year-old bond initiated by the two great kings was rekindled by the present Asante Hini and the Galmanche, which are thereby in honor of the visiting Otunfo Osaitu to the second at the Galmanche Palace in Accra. <laughs> The visit was characterized by grand ceremonial events, showcasing the rich cultural heritage of both the Ashanti and Ghana people. Today, two Francis laws to conquer territories. It is about friendship, it is about collaboration, how we can develop our people. The Asante Hene was warmly received by the Garmanche and his people with traditional drumming, dancing and displays of regalia that highlighted the unique customs and traditions of the Gulf state. Okay. The event underscored the importance of unity and collaboration among Ghana's diverse ethnic groups. Now we reject a certain 
ejena tabaji ete ha ga me fe wo fi a e pomi mi ni sumo e fa ni edu le tape ja ke shi ete ga ete ete ni ete ma je me fa me pe ni ga e wo shi be mo mi shi bo ni ma wo wai ha ju na bi mo he bo ke wo ti bo e den she mi ana i ko mi ni ga fe wo fe e pomi ti asante he ni am the government to later held private discussions aimed at fostering stronger ties and enhancing cooperation between their respective states. This is the news tonight here on G20 Television. Up next, is Insights proudly in association with Pepsodent. Insight is brought to you by Pepsodent Herbal for strong teeth and gums and Pepsodent Charcoal for natural whiter teeth. Inside this evening, there is a raging conversation on whether or not government has disbanded task forces set up to deal with menace of illegal mining. It follows an announcement by the Western Regional Minister, Kwabna Otre Dakumen Sab, to miners in the region that government has disbanded all illegal mining task forces. While this has sparked a lot of controversy, with some describing the announcement as disingenuous, while this, however, comes as a shock to security analysts. Dr. Adam Buna, who says the phenomenon is worrying since a little is known of the latest accession by the regional minister. He spoke to Nade Day's city on Star FM today. We need to hear from the president. He is a commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Mm. We need to hear from the defense minister. We need to hear from the interior minister. And also hear from the national security minister. Mm. We need to hear from these persons. Let's hear from them because this is not just the issue. The uh, NRA military is not only in charge of the military. Mm -hmm. But you have the national security minister, you have the interior minister, and you have the president who certainly takes over national security council. So we need to hear from all these uh, bodies mm -hmm. or institutions. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we are not hearing anything. And so as we speak, if, if a military officer or a police officer, or a national security operator, you put that operator to go into the bushes and fight Galancy. And that person told you, I will not go. Are you going to query that particular officer? I mean, that is a question some of us are absent. Because it is there, it is audible, on video, visuals, and I mean, everything is clear. That attack them when they come. Attack them when they come. Don't let them go. And in one way or the other, it says, if you want to give them money, you can see if you want to give them money. So do they give them money when they come there? Mm. Do they give them money when they come there? Let's get some clarity on this development because we've been joined by Dr. Rashid Hassan Pelpo, who is the member of parliament for Was Central and also the ranking member for the Lands and Natural Resources Select Committee of the Lawmaking Chamber. Alamo, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you, my dear. Absolutely. Mm. Are you aware that the task forces set up to fight illegal mining have been disbanded? Yeah, we, we, we heard that um, the task force has been disbanded. We don't know what is put in place of that. Wait, uh, sorry. So a rumor. Uh, uh, Not to cut you, but when you say that you've heard, heard from who? We heard in the media. Okay. We've not heard from, from anybody at all. And um, I don't know what alternative they have, and I don't know whether it is actually the case or not. Mm. Um, maybe there must be a formal communication from government to state exactly what we are hearing and to give reasons for it. And to say that the reasons they are giving and the alternative they are bringing in place will be a better option to fight galaxy and to fight illegal mining and destruction of our environment and waters. So it's important that. Um, we get true communication from government. Mm. Yeah, so we can have a factual representation from government saying that on this day, for this reason, we have withdrawn the military from the galaxy side. Mm. Uh, or from the operations they want to launch or they have launched. Right. Now, as a member of the Select Committee on Lands and Natural Resources, how worrying is the fact that a minister would actually state in public that miners have the absolute right to attack persons or military personnel 
on, on their mining sites. How worrying is this trend? It's very worrying because when a, a government gets to a point where they have lost contact with the people, they say anything and they do anything, believing that what they are doing, nobody can see or nobody feels it. Um, this is a government that has okay almost a question, okay a situation where through a galaxy operation, somebody is caught in the in the office of the president himself getting died, and he okayed it. And um, the government where the president committed himself to say, I'm going to fight for the for the land and I'm going to fight to protect the land and the the natural and, and the public health. And he's doing exactly the opposite. So it does appear as if everything else they are doing, bad or good, is normal, uh, which is something that cannot be tolerated at all. Right. So, I mean, what, what is the way forward for us? Because it looks like a very disturbing claim made by the parliamentary candidates for their main fee east. Yeah. Um, it, it, the way forward is to make sure we follow the law. Mm. We are bound by the dictates of the law that we put in place to protect the people and to protect the environment. If there's any violation, we go back to the law. But I think that the government is such that they seem to be placing the interest of government and the interest of parties above all laws and above the, the interests of the people. And I think that Beyond all that is the fact that we need, we need to democratically change the system. We will change the existing system and have another system in place. We can look into these things and permanently resolve them to deter people from doing the past and justifying that past. I, I think that um, at this time, we can no longer believe that this government can change anything because they find everything else that are emanating from them to be okay. Imagine this gentleman talking about beating up military men and he has okay this government has not been any comment. They haven't punished the guy, they haven't reprimanded him and it's fine for government. So this is not a government you can trust to do anything positive about fighting the fighting for the land and um, ensuring that the people are protected. You are not sure the government can resolve the Galamsey menace. From where you no. sit, from where, from, from, I just want to know from where you sit, what, what do you think has become of our fight against Galamsey? It's a failure. It's a complete failure. Can you imagine that for the last seven years, this government has been talking about the need to fight Galamsey, the need to fight Galamsey. The next moment you see government people, government officials, party position holders involved in the same thing. Mm. And you see, government wants to fight. So they feel like government wants to fight the last day. And for seven years, they want to fight the last day. And the public in Ghana must know that these are not the two situations. I mean, these are, these are not two reflections of what we want them to do. And that these are non proof situations they are presented to us. So I, I, I think that it must be very clear to everybody that they have failed to fight the last day. Mm. They are not in the interest of fighting the last day. They are not interested in fighting the last day. They don't want to fight the last day. Their failures are normal for them. Anything that will result in the fight for the last day, they are against it. And they continue to perpetuate the order. The order they have come to meet. And uh, I, I think that we need to take that problem. Right. Now, finally, as a committee, will you summon the minister before the House to give a proper clarity on the real status of the anti galamsey task forces? I would wish that it happened. Um, the petition to resume Parliament, we've had a meeting on that, and we can take a firm decision as to what would happen. But I think that this is worth um, inviting the minister to respond to questions on that and to assure us that there is still an intention which is much more practical than the full intentions we know. Uh, th thank you so much, Honorable, for those inputs there. Honorable Rashid Pelpo is a uh, member of the ranking member, ranking committee 
on lands and natural resources. Let's come in the studio and engage my colleague, Musa Lamsa, who has a lot more about what the minister or stakeholders have been saying with regards to the Lamsay task force. Musa, thank you so much for your time this evening. Yes, uh, Vanessa, very interesting there from the minister. He said they have heard mm -hmm. that the task force has been disbanded. You mean the MP? The Member of Parliament yeah. for War Central and also the ranking member on the Lands and Natural Resources Com Committee of Parliament saying that the, 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 they have heard that the task force has been disbanded. Well, two things. Uh, the earlier one, 2021, mm. Minister for Lands and Natural Resources at the press conference at the Ministry of Information indicated that the task force for Operation Halt Phase 1 had been disbanded, has been suspended okay. uh, for now. So if we can listen to the minister when he was addressing the, the media in 2021 relating to the task force being disbanded. I will very strongly but respectfully conclude by saying that it's either we are fighting this men or we are not. It's either we are determined to clear our water bodies and forest reserves or we are not. We cannot waver in this matter. So the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and for that matter government supports the Garam forces in this patriotic work they are engaged in. Having said that, at some, shall I say, rogue and uh, Work imposters are taking advantage of the atmosphere and the quest for enforcement to go about, to go around the country harassing small scale entities, people who are involved in small scale mining. I want to clarify that what the military are engaged in is being codenamed or dubbed Operation Hall 2. And the Minister of Defense has been very uh, clear about it. There's a lot of clarity on it. It's indicated that we've all been on the same page from the very beginning to now that that relates to only the red zones, water bodies, forest reserves. In the case of water bodies, 100 meters away from the bounds uh, water body in our country. Forest reserves, we are clear about them. So that is the current ongoing operation. The military are not involved in any other operation. If there's going to be any other operation outside the Operation Hall 2, that will be sanctioned by the official authorities, either by myself, the Minister for Defense, or National Security, or whatever, or the government establishment. So I want to make it very clear that tax forces which are moving about the country, harassing small scale miners, whether they are involved in legal or illegal mining, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has not mandated the operation of any tax forces. I believe that is very clear. Operation, the, the, the activities and or operations of Operation Vanguard has been suspended for the time being. Operation Vanguard is no more in operation as we speak. We had a meeting between myself, the Minister for National Security, the Minister for Interior, the Minister for Defense, and the Minister for Information. So but well, I, that, that is what I mean. The minister had to say that was in 2021. I mean, so, clearly indicating the absence of military involvement. Yes, in, what, in the fight again. Yeah. So we, we had two issues to to deal with uh, at that time. Mm. We had people who were mining very close to the water bodies, okay. the river banks, and so on. So those areas they marked them as red zones, including uh, forest reserves that have been uh, reserved for for whatever purpose. Those areas were earmarked as red stones. And I remember that, that press conference, the minister also announced the uh, recruitment of water guards uh, after the disbandment of, of Operation Vanguard, those who were going around stopping people. Well, a year later, mm. the minister was back again at the Information Ministry, and he had this to say about Operation Halt 2 again. Let's, let's listen to the minister. Today, the fundamental reason why we are having this press interaction and the thrust of my presentation is going to be on the renewed uh, efforts, military operation by the Ghana Armed Forces, um, um, uh, which is christened Operation Hall 2. Uh, ideally, uh, the senior members of the Ghana Armed, F F F Armed Forces should have joined me for this press briefing, but they are very busy in the field, uh, in, the, in the bushes, 
and visa borders of our country and, and therefore uh, understandably uh, they have to continue with the work they are doing to be able to come to a firm conclusion or whatever they are engaged in. I, I, I did indicate um, I did indicate at the press briefing that the operation halt um, uh, too will will continue and, and that it we still will deploy it as a measure to support all the efforts we are making. Because as I've said many many times Law enforcement continues to be one of the major pillars on which we will win this battle against illegal small scale mining. Yes, the reforms are very important, which is some of the things I've been enumerating, and those are matters that we are spending a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of energy in making sure that we reform the sector, the licensing regime, and everything to do with small scale mining. That is being done. But whilst we are doing that, you also have to recognize and appreciate. And as it's become evident lately, that there will still be recalcitrant people and people who will be determined because of the bannings involved in illegal small scale mining to continue with their activities, with their nation wrecking activities of illegal small scale mining. And to that extent, we have to continuously make sure that um, the law enforcement regime is fit for purpose and up to scratch, which is why Operation Halt has been launched again and uh, the soldiers are out there as uh, we speak. So you heard them. I mean, so clearly a, a sharp U-turn. This abandoned mm -hmm. it, a year later, we had to relaunch it to make sure they go out to, to, to do their work. But just last week, we had the Western Regional Minister tell the miners that, well, those uh, military groups have been disbanded, and they have to go through the new process that has been introduced, that... Uh, applying through the district and um, municipal mining committees and then getting a concession and then demarcating it. So new things are happening in the space, but the question still remains. Mm. What is the status? The real status. Of the military uh, or use, the use of the military to deal with illegal miners in the country. But just after those conversations, something happened. I'm sure you, you tell the, the viewers what happened in the western region. Yes, but, I mean, uh, thank you so much, Mr. for those updates there. Let's still stay on this because a military man believed to be from Takwa Abosu base has reportedly been assaulted by unknown persons believed to be illegal miners. The victim, whose name has been given as Timothy Ajakosi, is said to be among four soldiers who visited a Galamse site at Wasa Achimpim in the Wasa East District on Friday, June 7, 2024. Now, according to a source, a mob suspected to be illegal miners trailed the soldier and gave him a hot chase. His strength failed him at a fuel station, giving his pursuers the opportunity to catch up with him and gave him some beatings. He sustained injuries on the hands. A simply member for the area, Joseph Akomia, upon hearing of the incident, rushed there with the chairman of the unit committee to save Timothy, who had been left in a pool of blood. He was subsequently sent to Wasa Atiku Health Center for treatment. Police in the area have launched investigations in their bid to arrest the assailants who have since gone into hiding. Meanwhile, some residents have begun fleeing the area for fear of reprisal attacks from the military. Well, this wraps up Insight here on News Tonight. We are back after this break. You're welcome back from the break. This is still News Tonight here on GS1 Television. And I am Tutu Adan. So up next on the broadcast is Factometer. Well, you are welcome to Factometer, where we separate facts from fiction. And tonight, we examine a recent claim made by Vice President and flag bearer of the ruling New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mohamed Dubalmia, during the Greater Accra Youth Connect campaign trail on June 5, 2024. And today, for every senior high school student, we have given them one tablet for free. One student, one tablet. One student, one tablet. One student, one tablet. One student, one tablet. We are the first country in the whole of Africa, 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 we are the first country to give all our senior high school students tablets for free. We are the first country. And even in the advanced nations, many have not done it. So we are putting a premium on education.
education and on skills training. Well, he does have a vice president there, but the emphasis is for every senior high school student, we have given them one tablet for free. And that is an exact direct quote from the vice president. Now let's break down this claim. You know, we know the government plans to distribute free tablets to senior high schools, and that is indeed a fact. This initiative claimed aims to enhance digital learning by providing each student with a tablet. Students will essentially have e-textbooks. No, yeah, I'm fine. I haven't got any. But I'm over to the government school, but still, we haven't heard of them. About that, one student, one laptop, we haven't heard of them. The government has started this one student, one tablet in Akatechnika Institute. How have you received that since you're in the final year? No, we haven't received anything yet. We haven't received one student, but have you heard that the distribution is ongoing? Yeah, I heard it, but we haven't received anything. As a school system, I don't really know, but I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure I will receive some. I started one student one tablet. Since you are in your first year, have you received one? Either you can send yes or no. No. Have you received one? Yes. Are you aware that the government the distribution is only has a school getting one? Yes, please. Have you have brought some here and have you seen it? I've not seen some bad. I heard it from my friends. Well, so ATTC, one of the schools selected in phase one, has not yet received a tablet, as she heard from the student there. And to further verify the vice president's claim from every senior high school student has been given one tablet for free, we also visited the Accra High School. And those were the bites you heard from the students there. When the government is doing one student, one tablet, have you received one? No, please. Have you... Um, seen or uh, seen one on campus yet? No, please. Has any of your colleagues been in form two or form one received this one student one tablet? No, please. Why? <laughs> if not received, I uh, yes. But government is currently distributing one student, or is this one student one tablet distribution ongoing? Have you received one? No, no. Have you seen one? No, not yet. No. And have you heard your school, or have you seen one in school as it stands now? No, yeah. Government is currently doing one student, one tablet. Have you received one as a final year student? No, please, and I'm willing to get one from them. But since they are delaying, I have no options. Yeah. But you haven't even seen one on campus yet? No, please, no. Well, those were students of the Accra Senior High School. Now, based on our findings, both ATTC and Accra High Schools have not received a tablet. This suggests that the distribution is not as widespread as claimed. Now, let's just run the factometer to assess the accuracy of the claim. And today, for every senior high school student, we have given them one tablet for free, as claimed by the vice president. Well, so there you have it. The factometer indeed claims that the claim by the vice president that every single senior high school student has received a tablet for free is completely false. It is factually inaccurate. Now, while the government initiative is in place, students are yet to receive tablets. That wraps up factometer for tonight. In business this evening, a damaged transformer has left residents of Gumani, a suburb of Sagnarigu in the northern region, in darkness. For the past five days, some residents have been forced to sleep in open spaces due to the hot weather condition in the area, and businesses are also making losses as they are unable to operate. <laughs> The suburb of Tamale have been battling with a power outage for the past five days. They have been compelled to sleep in open spaces with their own savior from mosquito bites being insecticide treated nets. You can't plan your business life. Sometimes your computers cannot be powered on. You have to travel distances to even go and beg neighbors and friends to power on your laptops and phones. I mean, look, we are in a century where we must be smart. We must be very productive in handling affairs of electricity. These are basic necessities that we need in life. Water, light, please. It is whoever is in government or in governance. You need to provide us those necessities. Light is very essential for our development. We plead with the government, any other stakeholder who can help us, please remedy the situation. 
we have children and darkness like this it endangers them when even there is light we are not safe how much more when there is darkness a lot of uh, how do you call it we keep people around and our children are always in danger so often we don't let them stay outside because of the darkness by 6 6 30 they have to be indoors so that at least we know they are safe so for the outage there is a lot of problems that it has brought upon us this is the fourth day that we are in and as you can see you yourself as you came here you can see there is no life around where there is light there is life but with the darkness nothing is happening it is not just residents who are suffering businesses are also feeling the pains of the outage see the way my teeth are swelling five days today we don't have lights and when we are calling them they will pick many shops and restaurants have recorded losses with the outage persisting Hamid Ramato owns a provision shop where she sells locally produced beverages now I can't sell anything all my teeth are spoiled over a thousand plus and I don't know who will pay that debt for me. I don't have anybody to pay my debts. I'm begging them. They should please. They should please come and wipe our tears. We are begging them. In the name of God, we are begging them. We are suffering here. Not even me alone. All of us. Women, we are crying. They should come and help us. Please, they should come and help us. See, see my tears. All my tears are spoiled. Abba, Abba. Abba. Our efforts to get an explanation from the Northern Electricity Distribution Company, NETCO, has been unsuccessful, but the assembly member for Gumani tells us the outage is not as a result of Dawson, but that a damage transformer costed. You know, this is NETCO, and NETCO is an electricity company of Ghana. So they said the, 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 um, the transformer is damaged. We are looking up to them to be able to fix this problem for us because we don't, we can't fix the problem ourselves and we also need the light. They have to do it for us. It is their duty. It is mandatory for them to provide us the electricity. His inability to get the network to resolve the problem is giving him sleepless nights. Day in, day out, there are calls on my phone. Even um, it is weekend, but uh, the people need the, the electricity the most. So um, we are not sleeping. Yes, for the past four days, about five days today, we don't have light. We don't have light at all. Residents here will continue to suffer the brunt of the outage if it continues. As the news team understands, the extent of damage to the transformer will require several days more to be fixed and for electricity to be fully restored. Reporting for G2 News, Abdul Hanan Adam, Gumani. The Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana has hinted at a potential shortage of food and a significant increase in the price of goods by the end of August. While speaking to GH1 Business, the Executive Secretary of the Association, Samson Asaki, explained that businesses are struggling to remain operational due to the high costs associated with importing and clearing goods, which are exacerbated by the continuous depreciation of the city. Many, many of the business people are saying that they won't import again. And so, give ourselves, if it's true that they won't import again, Give yourself from now to August ending, you will realize that there will be shortage of food in this country. There is going to be artificial shortage until the government do something with the city, forget about it. And the prices of goods is going to hit high skyrocketing. And you and I, we haven't, we haven't seen anything. You wait till uh, by the end of August, we shall see in the, the, the government, well, I don't know. Maybe they are sleeping in their, uh, in their stomach, but they will definitely wake up. Uh, when the prices get there, when they, will, they, they, they begin to be shortage of food and prices are rising beyond government policies, we shall see. You're welcome back from the break. This is still news tonight. Before we do international updates, let's do a local story. And the flag bearer of the governing New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mohamed Bamiyam, has announced his intention to amend Section 63D of the Chief Tenancy Act if given the mandate to govern. According to him, the amendment will empower chiefs 
who had been sidelined in the governance of the country. He was addressing members of the Ashanti Regional House of Chiefs at the start of his three-day tour of the region. Justice Bidiako has the details. The flag bearer of the governing party received a rousing welcome by supporters of the party in the region upon his arrival. He was accompanied by the national chairman of the party, Stephen Ayosu in team, among other members of his campaign team. <laughs> At a meeting with members of the Ashanti Regional House of Chiefs, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia called for the support of the traditional rulers in his bid to become president. He assured them of his desire to restore some powers to them if given the mandate to govern in order for them to support the state in the day-to-day -day running of the country. No, no, no. The other area, uh, I to say is in the area, in your area, the church, the president could define the lines of succession for all key policy lines of succession in Ghana. Disputes are held down. And it's because many people are all benching their Sinovra, they want to issues. And if you don't have the lines of succession and then qualified, you will have disputes. And we will empower the judicial council of how to choose now you couldn't find lines of succession you know, across all the agency institutions in Ghana. The young Sama will bring down the, the, the disputes I over. He reiterated his resolve to introduce living wages for traditional rulers if elected as president. And empowering the youth is not only to change the law, but to financially resource the chiefs. who doubles as the chairman of the Ashanti Regional House of Chiefs, described Dr. Baumia's vision for the chieftain's institution as very laudable. For the record, you are the first dignitary, external dignitary. That is not... That is it for the broadcast this evening. Thank you so much for your company. The next news broadcast is at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful evening.